Have you ever wanted to add structural color change to your origami designs? Why yes, I have, Bill. I'm Tim Rickman, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this fourth episode in my box pleating series. It's really good. You should like and subscribe. Structural color change is when you use paper that's one solid color on either side of the paper. And depending on how you fold the paper, you either see one color or the other. I use this a lot in my designs because it's a great way to further illustrate the subject of your model. I've got a few things I want to show off in this video. The first thing is I want to share with you my formula I use for creating these dragon style wings that you see on Ridley here and uh, Billy the eye bat. Whenever I'm setting up a grid for a box pleated model with color change, uh, I refer to this top color as the main color and the secondary color is going to be face down. And when you're done folding your grid, you're going to want the crease that runs along the outside edge to be a mountain fold when the color that's going to be your main color is face up. And a good way to determine if that's going to work is you decide what box grid you want. For this model, we'll just pick a 32 grid and you count it out. So we're going to fold it in half. Two, four, eight, 16, and 32. So if I was to fold this with the paper main color up first, uh, my outside edge would be a valley fold. So we're going to start with the paper turned over to the secondary color and fold it in half that way first. Now that we have our 32 by 32 grid set up, I'm going to show you how to make the crease pattern for a wing like this one we have here on our eye bat. Uh, go ahead and turn the paper over. So we're going to start in a bottom corner here, and we're going to make a row of three spikes next to each other. And this first one is going to come straight from the corner of the paper, and it's going to be two units long, but you can use uh, other lengths, uh, two, three, four, five, and uh, varying amounts of points next to each other. So we're just going to do three that are two units long next to each other here. And this first one is all the way in the corner of the paper. And remember me saying that as long as that center point of your crease pattern for that feature is uh, anywhere on the paper, even in the corner, that's still going to make a point that's two units long. Next we're going to add a river. This river can be as uh, wide as you need it to be. And what this is going to create is the distance uh, between those spikes and the rest of the, um, the wing. So if you wanted a wing that trailed out a little bit more, you would use a wider river. But for this, we're just going to use one that's two units wide, meaning the distance between this edge of the river and the edge of our, uh, our row of spikes here is just going to be two units tall. Now we need a wrapped point that's eight units long. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then come back the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is going to create the apex of the wing here. So everything above that river here. And uh, we've also got some extra paper at the top. You can either use this to create some uh, fingers or claws at, as some creatures, dragons, and bats and stuff do at the top of their wings. But if you want a wing without those, you would just wrap these layers uh, on top of that point. But, uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and draw in some points. So turn the end of this wrapped point into a flap that's two units long. And go ahead and add one more next to that pushing it all the way to the edge of the paper here. So again, we've done a similar thing that we did at the bottom of the model. We just have uh, uh, a flap that's two units long all the way pushed to the edge. And go ahead and 
draw a perimeter around that as well. And the next thing we have to do is just to put a river around all of this. And what that's going to do is give us a little bit of distance between the wing and where that attaches to the rest of the model. So this, this uh, length of paper right there. So let's make that two units long, just like this. Okay. And that's a basic formula for the wing. You've got your points at the bottom, which are going to give you the um, sort of webbing at the bottom of the wing. And you can make those as tall or as short as you want them. You have a river, which gives you some space in between those and the rest of the wing. The apex of the wing, which you want to keep a little bit short because it helps to spread the wings out if it's shorter. If it's taller, it's a little uh, harder to get the wing to look very full. And then you have the option to include wings and uh, your uh, extensor, which uh, connects to the rest of the model. So I've gone ahead and drawn a mirror image of this wing on the other side so that we can get a wing on both sides of the model like we have here. And to collapse this, all we need to do is add some kind of uh, connection between these two things. So I'll go ahead and add a diagonal V shape up here just so we can continue on these uh, these diagonals and be able to collapse this. So I'm going to collapse this whole thing down uh, after we've drawn in the whole crease pattern. But right now I want to show you the crease pattern for these color change eyes that we have here in our eye bat. Um, I also use these in my model Jabberwocky and uh, most recently in my redesign of Ridley. Uh, you can see the color change eye there. Adds a lot of dimension to the model. So um, I'm going to have this entire center column be a row of, of spikes, sort of, uh, you know, like fur or something like that. So we're just going to make a whole bunch of boxes down the middle like this. Okay. But if we come to the side here, this is what the... Uh, crease pattern for this eye looks like. So come down four, one, two, three, four. And make a diagonal through four boxes just like this. Okay, and now make a spike, a point that's two units tall. Okay, and now put two more points next to that. And then use this to continue a river around the whole thing. Okay, so this is pretty much what it looks like here. You just need three points that are either one or two units long along the edge of a paper. And the whole thing needs to be on there. It can be all the way to the edge, uh, uh, but it has to be the complete half of uh, a box for one unit one uh, point that's two units tall. And then you need a river that's at least one or two units long. And uh, the reason for that is so that when you shape the model, you can pull it out a little bit. If it's right up against uh, the, uh, the inside of, of a pleat, you won't be able to uh, shape the eye properly. So that's what the crease pattern for the eye looks like. And let me show you. Draw it in on the other side here. Just like this. Okay, so that's what your crease pattern should look like now. The last cool element of color change that I want to show you in this video is what happens when we make a, uh, a point. Uh, we've, we've already discussed what happens when you make a point come from the top side of the paper, but you can also make them come from the bottom and point down. And that's another cool way to add some color change into your model uh, that you can see here in the, in the Ridley model where his ribs are a different color uh, points that are coming out from the middle there. So we're going to use this uh, space that we haven't filled in yet. 
to create that. And we're going to make a river that's one unit long, wide. And when you make a point, as long as the center of that point is at the intersection of uh, two valley creases, you know that the point is going to go in that direction. So when we turn the paper over, uh, and we're looking at the underneath, it's going to look like it's at the intersection of two valley creases, like this. Uh, when we collapse this, we're going to collapse it from the perspective that this is the primary color. So go ahead and fill in the other side of the paper, just like you did there. And these are all the diagonal lines we need for our crease pattern. Oh, except for this middle row here. Just continue a row of uh, boxes that are going to make flaps that are two units long. All the way down like this. And there you have it. This is our completed crease pattern for this eye bat. So let me show you now what it looks like when we collapse that down. Now normally when I'm folding an origami model, um, I'll draw the diagonal creases for a box pleated model on the uh, secondary color side of the paper. And then uh, once I add in the diagonal creases like this, uh, when I turn it over I'll be able to see those creases. But for the purposes of those, this video, since it's a little harder for you to see, uh, I've gone ahead and penciled in where those creases are on the A side of the paper too. I'm going to start collapsing this. And I want to start with the color change eye so that you can see how that comes together. And I'm not going to worry about the rest of the model right now. So any pleats that come off of this, I'm just going to take them all the way to the edge and just do this one on the side right now. And then I'm going to do just bring together all of these pleats since they're all going to go to the edge for this demonstration. Okay, now that I have them all like this. Gonna push this down and get these points working next to each other. And then this last one near the edge there, pull that over. Like so. Okay, so now we have this. Find this center point and spread that pleat open like this. Now we have two points folded in half behind one flattened out point. Fold that point down like this. And now you're going to open that up. So reach in with a shaping tool or something and open this up like a, a box and you'll see the secondary color inside there. So 
just kind of push it out to the side and prop the sides up uh, like it was the inside of a box like this. And okay, what we do with this is this edge that goes around the whole thing, we're going to fold this in half. So just with your fingernail or something, uh, make a valley crease around the perimeter of this entire thing. And we're going to fold that back uh, around the whole thing. And that's going to help keep it propped open, uh, just like it is here. You can see that we've folded that paper back. There's no real easy way to do this. You just have to kind of uh, make the start of a crease with your fingernail or something like that. Uh, if you have smaller boxes, uh, a pair of tweezers sometimes helps. And then one thing that might help if you open this up a little bit and start from the back here. And kind of Turn this around, and if you kind of start from the back, And that's what it's going to look like when you have that shaped. And then you can kind of round it out by pressing down on the corners of it. And it makes it look like a round eye. Okay, let's collapse the rest of the model. I'm going to undo what we've done here just because it's going to make it easier to get the rest of this done. So refold this in its pre-shaped configuration. Okay. I'm going to start in on one of the wings now. Uh, start with these bottom points. And just have this go all the way to the other side for now. The first one that you do on this side. Somebody recently asked me if you can fold box pleated models without all the uh, extraneous creases that you don't use in them and the answer is yes I keep all of them in my models because when I'm collapsing the model I find it easier especially if it's a more complicated structure uh, to use some of these creases in the collapsing process to make it easier for myself to um, collapse things down and when you get over to here this crease that runs into that corner is a valley and we're going to uh, skip folding the claws for the time being. And just fold the wrapped point right now. Okay. My paper ripped a little bit, but it's all right. And. Continue on the side of the paper. Okay, now we're going to come back and get the other wing. If I was folding this with the claws, I would avoid uh, folding this, those claws, yet anyway. I would fold it as a wrapped point and then I usually do a secondary part of my 
collapse where I go back and do smaller features like that. Anything sort of along the edge that's a row of smaller points, I usually come back after I've shaped most of the rest of the model and open up the paper a little bit. Now I need to grab these that are going to become the points I was talking about that uh, are going to point down on the secondary color side. And again, you're going to avoid folding through all of these just yet. Just uh, collapse them into wrapped points for the time being. And also when you're collapsing, you can sometimes make uh, extra creases just to get things to collapse down. Some extra diagonal creases that won't show up when the model's collapsed. Just helps you get everything in the right place. Okay. So now that the model looks like this, what we need to do is come through and get the ones that are happening through the edge. So open it up like that and then fold it in half right down the center of the model. And now all of these creases running up into this are going to help you with these spikes. that uh, run along the, the back. Kind of getting started on one side and alternate back and forth all the way down. Start in from the back a little bit, meet somewhere in the middle. Just kind of press down in between these two points. Those diagonals on either side go in and press together. Okay, so this is the Preliminary collapse completed. Now we need to go back and get all the spikes at the end of the wings and at the end of uh, these points right here. And now that we have that preliminary part of the collapse completed, we're going to come back and get all of the uh, little spikes we didn't get the first time. So find this point and uh, open it up and grab the pleats that are wrapped around it and move them out to the side. And you're just going to collapse this like you did the spikes along the back. Just um, fold it in half like this. It's a little tricky because there's a point that's uh, on the opposite wing that wants to nest into underneath where you're working here. Just kind of pull that out to the side. It's a little bit fiddly, but uh, I'm 
since that gets started, you should be able to push that into two points and then just fold those into one another like that. Okay. And do the same thing on the other side. Uh, my paper ripped, so we're just going to leave that one there so I can show you what it looks like uh, if you choose to have it remain a wrapped point instead. Next, we're going to do these uh, points that become a little mustache or whatever's going on there. This one's a little easier. You turn the paper over, just unfurl those pleats out to where this point starts. Fold that in half and start collapsing these down. The tricky part about color change like this is that this is not going to lie flat. So uh, as we continue on shaping the model, everything over here is going to be a little bit awkward. It's not going to collapse down into a flat base anymore. So you're going to come over to the other side and do the same thing over here. Just open that up all the way to this point. Pull that in half. Start to collapse these down. This is the uh, finished base for our eye bat. <laughs> oh man. So to start shaping this, you want to take this group of, uh, we'll call them whiskers, and you're just going to fold those in half on either side, and really press those down, and then you take your uh, your eye parts here, and this time you're going to fold down the two points on either side of that. And you, you bring the eye parallel, so uh, horizontal with the side of the face there, and you make a little diagonal crease through the layers to get it to, um, to go out to the side like that on either side here. Okay, and then once that's done, um, Later on, we're going to uh, uh, open those up and shape them the way they're supposed to be. But right now, let's go and take a look at the wings. Uh, so find the, the point where it goes up into the center point there. And this pleat here, open that one up on both sides. So find that point on the other side as well. Uh, this one looks a little different because this is the side with the claws. Go up in here and fold these back, Oop. fold those back like that, kind of fold the ones in front of that forward a little bit, so you've got sort of that shape going on, and now move the wings up as far as they'll go, and make little diagonal creases on either side of that. paper to the side and bring these up like, like this. Now we can bring the wings out to the side. Okay. The way you shape these wings, you kind of uh, make a really shallow or steep, depending on how you look at it, diagonal crease from this point here all the way up into the corner. So it looks Kind of like, like that. So 
to get it to lie flat so it goes right into that top of that V shape there and then you fold it back all the way like that and do that on all of these pleats take them all the way to the point where they end Uh, one, two, three, the fourth one, you just kind of do like that, and then you sort of push this material, moving that crease that it's on out a little bit, and then it gives you this uh, rounded off shape like this. And then you take your claws, and you're going to reach in, find the one inside, and hold on to that and then pull the one in front of it out a little bit so they're separated and then once they're separated kind of about that far apart you can fold them in half uh, make a valley crease underneath them and then pinch them in half like that So we've gone ahead and shaped the other wing and since this side doesn't have the claws the apex of the wing goes up two units farther and you can see kind of what I'm talking about if this wrapped point in your crease pattern for your wing if you make that taller um, then the wing is a lot more narrow whereas if it's shorter you can spread this out just a bit more and even just two units you can see that this wing is kind of narrow and it comes up really far. Uh, so that's why that the point doesn't go all the way to the edge. You want to keep it a little bit shallow. Uh, okay, so we just want to continue um, open up this eye and shape it back like we did before. This paper is a little bit brittle, so it's tearing on me a little bit. But I'm all still going to look okay. Normally, I use double tissue paper to make my color change models. And you would think tissue paper would rip really easily, but if you get the right kind, uh, it's actually really sturdy. And you can also shape that with MC paste, which is what I would do for a feature like this um, to keep this gap that happens there. It wants to kind of spread out and look a little bit like Pac-Man. Uh, but if you put some MC paste on that, it's going to close and keep its shape like that. Okay, I'm going to skip this eye over here. We'll do that off the camera. And then the last thing to do is just to spread out these points on the back. Just find each one of them and kind of like you did with the claws on the top of the wing just um, fan these out a little bit take them and pull them out and press them down so that they're like that and then the same thing with these chin whiskers I don't know why our bat has whiskers <laughs> uh, uh, yeah Ah. It's a little tricky, but just for fun, kind of spread those out like this and do that on the other side of the model as well. So here's what our shaped eye bat looks like. Uh, it didn't turn out quite as good as the one I spent a little bit more time on. Uh, obviously you don't have to fold this model in order to uh, understand the concepts I was trying to explain in this video. 
Um, if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Uh, go ahead and watch some of my other videos and share this with a friend. And if you have any suggestions for a future video, uh, uh, something that you'd like to see, either a concept that can be applied to box pleating or um, just something that could improve the quality of my videos that you'd like to see, go ahead and leave that in the comments below. I do read all of those and they help to make the series better. Uh, so for now, this is Tim Rickman and uh, Billy the iPad <laughs> saying thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye! Hey, you new around here? What's wrong with your wing? I'm special edition! <laughs> <laughs>